particular research projects along with SFI and use the SFI funding uh, to de-risk uh, maybe high-risk projects uh, or projects that don't maybe justify 100% shareholder money in terms of the risk. Program. It funds movement of researchers between industry and academia. 
So basically, if you want to take someone from a research body, so from a university or IoT, into your company uh, for up to a year full time or two years part time, you can do that. SFI will fund their salary, travel, and subsistence. Uh, and in the opposite direction, if you'd like to take someone from your company to spend some time in, in an academic institution within Ireland, uh, we'll fund the, the travel and subsistence of that individual, again, for up to a year full time or two years part time. Uh, the, the, the funding available is up to €120,000 per fellowship. It's open to Irish and international companies, so if you have a sister site abroad, for example, we can fund travel and subsistence and have the salary of a researcher from an Irish university or, or institute of technology to go and spend some time at your international sister site and to come back and spend some time at the Irish operation as well. So you can, you can use it to build some awareness uh, of the Irish operation within your company. Uh, it's open to all levels in the, in the Irish academic system, so anyone basically who's a postdoctoral researcher up to a professor uh, level, so postdocs, lecturer, senior lecturer, professor, it's open to all of those from postdoc level up. So postdoc is someone who's completed their PhD and is now working as a researcher in a university, so, so they're all eligible, as long as they fall with the Mesopotamia legal agreement, which is STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. There are deadlines every year to submit proposals in June and December. Uh, the academic partner will always submit the application, so you can write it together. The academic partner will submit the application, and success rates are very high. This is a program that we want to grow. It's, it's really a seeding program to see those uh, initial relationships with industry partners and academic groups in academia. So the success rate runs at about 70 to 75 percent. Okay, so that, that, that's all I want to say about industry fellowships. I've included a couple of links of resources which will help you to find uh, partners, academic partners that, that you, can, you can look at maybe after the conference. So there's a, link, there's a LinkedIn group specifically for companies like people, folks on the, yeah, on the academic side who are interested in this. Just stick up a profile and you can see the menu of researchers that might be interested in doing the fellowship with your company. Uh, there is a career forum that SFI holds every year. All the right people who register for that are, are at that link. And then there's a couple of different databases that you'll be able to access. So when the, the slides are circulated later, you'll be able to have a look at those resources if you're trying to find some of your And the next program I'll talk about briefly is the SFI Research Centres program. So SFI has funded 12 world leading large scale research centres over the last two to three years. Uh, we've invested 355 uh, million euro uh, and had co investment uh, of approximately 190 million euro. And from companies across various sectors uh, in Ireland. So you can see the graphic on the right hand side uh, shows all the different areas that the research centres are in. So there are large research centres in areas of software, pharma, nanotechnology, medical devices, geosciences, digital content, telecommunications, perinatal <laughs> research, energy, nanomaterials, etc. etc. You, you, you can see the list there. So all of these research centres are, are, are typically on a scale between 30, 20 and 30 million euro uh, over six years. Uh, we have currently a new call to develop new research centres, so there is an opportunity to, to get involved in a very big uh, new initiative that will be funded uh, through maybe the end of 2016, starting 2017. And there's also a spokes programme that allows you to turn into existing research centres that I'll briefly just mention as well. So just before I, I tell you a, a bit more in terms of specifics about those, uh, about those two programs, uh, so there's a centres program that allows you to get involved in developing a new centre, and then there's a spokes program that allows you to join existing centres, and I'll tell you what the centres are uh, in a moment. So just a quick word to the structure because it helps you to understand how the programs interact. So this is what a centre looks like in terms of its structure. In the middle there's, there's operation staff, up in the very centre, and there's platform projects. So typically platform projects are projects that are maybe a little bit more early stage for uh, companies or industry partners to get involved with, but that benefit industry partners potentially in the future. So it's to develop something maybe that's coming, and then there's spokes around the centre. So all of these uh, centres have a number of industry partners, and the spokes are particular sets of projects. So you might have a manufacturing research centre, for example. So there is one at the minute, but if a manufacturing research centre, for example, was established, uh, some of maybe the earlier stage research might happen as part of the platform research, or maybe some of the equipment that's specific to all of the different spokes. And then in each spoke would be projects of specific interest to some industry partners. So spoke one, for example, might have one individual company co-funding a research project uh, that's specifically of interest to them. 
Conference Book 2 might have maybe three companies, calls from his other research projects that they will benefit from. So basically the reason I'm showing the structure is because the spokes program allows you to join existing research centres by adding new spokes. So if there's a research centre that's operating in your area, you can go and chat with them about what their future strategic direction is, and if there's good, good traction there, you can submit a spokes application and you can join that research centre. So quickly, on the new research centres program 2016, that's the opportunity to get involved in new research centres, so, so to be established research centres. Uh, all of the centres must demonstrate an ability to be world leading. Uh, this call is open to proposals in all areas of science, uh, technology, engineering and maths. So the 2012 and 2013 calls which were the previous ones for new centres were thematically constrained. Uh, funding is the same as last time round, so each centre can receive, receive between 6 and 30 million euro for 6 years from S5. Uh, and then there's an industry cost share requirement of a minimum 30% of which one third will take action. Uh, there's an expectation of a mixture of both large and small companies uh, that, that, that will be involved in the use of research centres and that's consistent with the existing research centres. Uh, Non-industry and non-exchequer contributions are also welcome, so uh, philanthropic cash can also come into the centres to help grow them. And there's deadlines upcoming in, in March and April, so if you want to get involved in potential new bids that are coming in, start talking about research bodies now, or contact us and point you in the direction of the groups uh, that we know are planning to submit. So to join existing research centres, so there's 12 existing research centres in all those areas that I very quickly mentioned earlier. Uh, you can do that through the Spokes programme that allows the existing centres to develop the line with new priorities and opportunities. There's no maximum or major minimum budget uh, constraints here, so if you have an absolutely huge project, there's no problem, there's no maximum. Uh, there's also no minimum, but we, we would expect to see projects of scale. So typically the projects funded here are, are in excess of half a million, typically one to two million, but we funded ones up to six million euros. Uh, there's two strands to this call. There's a rolling call, which is uh, based on a 50% industry cash cost share. It's assessed based on its own merit. So what that means is we send everything out for uh, international reviews for scientific excellence and potential for impact. For the rolling call, it's assessed on its own merit. So it's not a competition with other proposals. If the international experts uh, say to us, this should be funded, it's great stuff, it's been funded. Fixed call then is a lower cash cost share requirement, it's a 30%, so it's a lower buying, but it's a competitive assessment. So we send it out for the same international expert review, they say funded, great, then it goes into a ranked list and the top ones get funded. Very importantly and very relevant to this conference, for the fixed call it's a 30% cash cost share typically, but because we want to attract proposals in the area of advanced manufacturing, uh, there's a decreased, a decreased cash cost share for proposals in that space. So you're only required to have a minimum of 10% cash uh, for that 20% in kind. So you can get funding up to 70% for SFI if you're, if you're joining a centre and adding a dimension in advanced manufacturing. The last program that I'm going to mention very briefly is the Strategic Partnership, Partnerships Program. This is a little bit similar to the Spokes Program and it's for, it's for, in that it's for large collaborative projects of scale with universities or institutes of technology. The main difference here really is that you're not joining into an existing research centre. So if you want to do a large collaborative project of scale, of scale uh, but there isn't a research centre in the space, this can fund them. It's a 50-50 cash cost share, uh, so you, you, you can de-risk using, using SFI funding. It's quite a flexible program and it's designed really for where we have programs for collaboration between academia and industry where our other programs really don't fit. So we're quite open to folks coming in and say, look, this is what we'd like to do, what do you think? It is a 50% cash cost share and that's not flexible, but, but outside of that we're quite flexible in terms of what we fund. And we funded a range of project sizes here from about a million euro and the largest one uh, is a 12 million euro, uh, 12 million euro uh, project. Uh, the six million came from a mixture of philanthropic and uh, industry uh, cash. Uh, it's a roll of calls, there are no deadlines. The first stage is an expression of interest, where you can tell us some high level details of the project you're planning, we chat with you, etc. to make sure you're not wasting time if it's not suitable for the program. Uh, and then we invite by, by um, <coughs> invite to for proposals. For all of these programs, uh, the first point of 
contact with you can get with us if you like. So feel free to go directly to the university and answer the technology and speak with them about what, what your plans might be. In all cases, when you're submitting a proposal, it will always come from the academic partner. So you don't, you'll never have to learn any new software or get familiar with our system. You can write out a proposal together with your academic partners and they'll always be responsible for submitting it to us. Uh, so that's the high level on, on, on our industry and uh, last year programs if anyone has any questions I'd be happy to